Well, hello again. Welcome to Horror in Detail. Today we are going to share Wendigo encounter stories. First story. This story was shared by you slash lord underscore asparagus. Apparently skinwalkers come in pink. Christmas has never been my favorite holiday. Yeah, I love free stuff, but it feels like the amount of money I spend always outvalues the gifts I get. Other than that, I just don't prefer to hang around a large part of my family, especially for large gatherings. A large part of my family sees our gatherings as a perfect excuse to get black out drunk and talk angrily at each other over politics and all other manner of controversial topics. My family's Christmas gathering five years ago was no different. I'd flown down to my grandmother's house in southern Florida as the plan was for everyone to meet there and get their fill of food and liquor before finding their way home. I only stayed at my grandma's house for an hour or so the previous year, so my mom asked that I stay longer this time. According to her, everyone loved seeing me. Although, I'd debate they were too busy arguing what current trend was ruining the world. I ended up staying until about 10 before asking my mom if she could give me a ride back to my hotel since I'd Ubered there originally. She told me that she wanted to stay for a couple more hours, and suggested I try taking the bus to save money instead of ordering another Uber. Honestly, anything to get me out of that house would have come off as a good idea. I remembered seeing the bus stop on my way to my grandma's, and the walk to it didn't seem like it would be too far, so off I went. At the time it seemed like a perfectly good idea. I didn't know the bus schedule or how long they even ran but I was willing to take my chances. While walking back to my dorm in the middle of December would cause me to freeze my ass off. Luckily winter in Florida rarely drops below 70 degrees. It was honestly a relaxing walk, taking in the nighttime air and quiet. I'd started daydreaming about my class schedule next semester before I realized I could make out the bus stop about 30 feet in front of me. I swore under my breath as I realized someone was sitting there. As much as I hated being around my drunken family, I hated awkward stranger small talk even more. The closer I got, the easier it was to make out the person sitting there. She appeared to be a kindly lady in her mid to late 60s. Her hair was a large ball of silver and dark brown, with a large pair of thick rimmed glasses on her face. I have to admit it took me a good while to make out anything other than the bright pink coat she was wearing. For me, 70 degrees was shorts and t-shirt weather, but I suppose it wasn't unheard of to see an older person wearing a sweater anywhere that wasn't 90 degrees. I got within a couple steps of the bus stop bench before the lady turned to acknowledge me. She gave me a very warm hello and happy holidays that I returned, along with an awkward smile. I tried not to stare, but what I thought was a pink sweater was actually a thick pink fur and feather coat. I'd honestly never seen anything like it. A majority of the coat was made of pink fur, but the collar sprouted enough feathers to cover five or six birds. Dangling from her neck was a long pearl necklace, with some sort of elongated bird skull in the middle of it. In my head I wondered if she was into exotic fashion, or perhaps a huge bird lover. The sound of her loudly blowing her nose made me jump and shook me from my own thoughts. How is your evening, sweetheart? Her voice was dry but friendly, with an accent I couldn't quite place. I told her it was fine and returned the question, to which she launched into a wordy recollection of her entire day. I zoned out somewhere around her getting to the middle of her day and kept eye contact while randomly nodding. Where is your family now? Surprised by the sudden change of topic, I responded by jokingly telling her that they were at my grandmother's house drunkenly singing Christmas carols. She laughed and muttered something about how charming that was. I checked my phone and saw only a couple of minutes had passed and didn't hear or see any signs that a bus was coming anytime soon. I remember my eyes starting to feel really heavy. 
I shook my head, trying to wake myself up, but the feeling stayed. Excuse me. Have you seen my bird? I looked at the lady again and she had a look of panic and confusion on her face. Honestly, I probably did too. My bird was in his cage, but now he's gone. I looked on the ground and a large old-fashioned birdcage sat between the woman's legs. How long had it been there? I was pretty sure I hadn't noticed a big iron birdcage before. It was hard to remember or even think because the tiredness I'd started feeling morphed into a slight feeling of vertigo. It felt like the ground around me had begun to slowly spin. Ah, I see him. There's my darling. The lady was on her feet now, pointing across the street. Her voice sounded raspier, as if at some point in the last two minutes, she had turned into a chain smoker. I followed her finger and saw she was pointing at something standing in the tall grass across the street. I couldn't make out what the figure was, but I was positive it wasn't human. It had wide blocky shoulders, and a long, wiry neck, attached to a large circular head. The area of tall grass the figure stood in was covered in shadow, so I couldn't make out any other details. Through the shadow I could swear the figure was staring directly at us. Could you please go grab him sweetheart? The lady's voice seemed to be coming from inside my own head, and without even realizing it I felt myself moving toward the figure covered in shadow. As I got closer to the thing it shifted so that its entire body was facing me. It twitched and shook as if electricity was coursing through it. The closer I got, the faster my heart would beat. The more some kind of instinct inside me screamed that I was making a bad decision. But I couldn't stop myself. It was almost as if I had developed an obsession with reaching whatever this thing was. I was halfway across the street and a sudden shift in the moonlight illuminated the creature enough that I got a look at something that could only have been born from a nightmare. It spread its arms like it was stretching a pair of wings. Its skin a pale blue and stretched tight over its thin frame. Long stringy pink feathers sprouted from all over its body. Its long snake-like neck waved and slithered through the air, a head that resembled a pink human skull never broke eye contact with me. Its tiny eyes that glowed a bright purple. I couldn't stop myself from walking forward. I couldn't break my focus away from the glowing purple eyes of whatever thing stood in the grass in front of me. Its neck stretched outward towards me, shortening the distance until we were face to face. The loud and long blare of a bus's horn caused me to trip and fall backwards. The horn split me from whatever trance I was in, and I looked around to see the bus stopped and waiting behind me at the bus stop. I hadn't heard it pull up. I didn't even know how long it had been there. I twisted myself around and didn't see the old lady in the pink feather coat. Remembering the creature, I turned and was met by a tall man standing just outside the tall grass. He wore tattered clothing covered by a hood adorned in writings and pink feathers. Several large bird skulls hung from a thick rope necklace and several straps across his chest. I'd slowly started backing away before the man lunged at me, a curved knife in one hand. I scrambled to my feet, and sprinted to the bus, struggling not to trip. The driver looked at me with confusion and worry on her face. Asking several questions. Did I take something and did I know that man, among the first? I stuttered and rambled spitting out a bunch of random words, Eventually she simply waved me to the back. I was the only one on the entire bus. Still no sign of the old lady. The bus dropped me a block or so from my hotel and thankfully I made it to my room without any more incidents. I don't think I'll ever forget the look of that thing standing in the grass. Something that haunts me as much as that creature, is the fact that three people in that area disappeared that night. I always wonder if maybe those three people weren't so lucky as to break that creature's gaze. Second Story 
This story was shared by you slash Blazed. Did I meet a skinwalker in New Mexico? A year or so ago, I left England for the summer in order to travel a bit and maybe find some work abroad for a few months. I managed to stumble across a decently paying job as a farm hand in the northwestern area of the Navajo Nation Reservation in New Mexico. The farmer was looking for somebody to help him with busy work over the summer and allowed me to sleep in what I can only describe as a cabin, basically a big shed he had renovated in order to house whoever he had working for him at that moment in time. It was a large farmland and the shed was situated pretty much parallel to the house across the largest field of crops. Living in this shed with me was a half Native American boy who was about the same age as me, names Ahiga, apologies if I misspell it's been a while since I've wrote or spoke his name. Anyway, I arrived at the cabin after a long and stressful journey by plane and then pretty much hitchhiking my way across the USA. I met the farmer and the boy and they both seemed friendly enough, everything was smooth sailing for around two weeks even with the relentless heat beating down on my pale English skin. Ahiga and I became close as we were around each other 24-7, he would always tell me interesting stories of Navajo legend. He often told me of the Yi Lushi, skinwalkers, in detail and he seemed very knowledgeable on the subject. He told me how he dreamed of these creatures often, it seemed like he had some kind of morbid obsession with these things. I chalked it all up to horror stories and didn't really put any stock into what he was saying, although it did interest me. I've never been one to believe in or fear the supernatural. One evening after a heavy day of work, I headed back to the cabin to shower and change. I got back to the cabin, showered got changed and sat down on my bed. There was no sign of a Higa yet which was weird because he would usually be back by now. I waved it off and left my cabin to head into the nearest, town, if you will just to explore a bit more of the land I was staying in. I explored for a while and found a nearby bar to drink in as I hadn't had a single drink since moving here. I left the bar at around 10.30pm and it was pretty much fully dark. I began to walk back to the farm. As I walked back along the windy road I felt as if I was being watched. I walked on a bit faster and made my way across to the farm. As I walked around the farmer's house I noticed what looked like someone carrying a bag under their arm, leaving my cabin. Something felt and looked not right about this figure and its movements, I went stealth mode almost instinctively and took the long way around the field hiding behind the fencing. I managed to get a good angle on the figure. As he stood up, the light shining from with the cabin illuminated and I saw that it was a Higa. At first I was relieved but then I saw how erratically he was moving, almost with no rhythm at all. Under his arm he clutched a dog's severed head. I felt sick to my stomach and ducked down but managed to compose myself. I poked my head up to check once more and he was heading off into the forest. I took this opportunity to dart for the cabin and pull my keys out to unlock the door. As I got close I tripped and dropped my keys and thundered to the ground. I propelled myself back up and turned to see why I fell and saw I had tripped over the rest of the beheaded dog. I swung around to look towards the woods and saw, a higa, on all fours, not like an animal but like a person with their arms and legs bent in the wrong direction, it felt as if he was looking directly into my soul. He had two yellow, glowing eyes and a confused look on his crooked face. I am a Higa, I think he tried to say but the words were guttural and frothy, almost like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. I unlocked the door and bolted inside, locking it behind me and closing all the curtains and windows in the cabin. I sat awake all night, hearing noises and feeling watched somehow. I'd hear whatever it was at the door now and again pretending to be a Higa, it would repeat parts of the stories a Higa he'd been telling me whenever we relaxed in the cabin together on previous nights and every time it showed up a horrific smell filled the cabin and made me vomit a few times. 
In the end the harassment stopped and daylight began to shine through the curtains, I checked out the window and saw nothing outside. I quickly gathered all my possessions and got the fuck out of there. I flew back to England the next week after using all my farmhand money to rent a hotel room on the east coast as far away from the place as I could. I often wonder what happened to Ahiga but I'm glad I didn't wait around to find out. Many of you won't believe this story but I can assure you it's 100% true and I still think about it at night to this day. I'm still not sure what I saw but sometimes I still feel as if I'm being watched but I think this may be paranoia, there's no stories of these things following you across the pond. Is there? Third story. This story was shared. By you slash Drekinox. I accidentally invited a skinwalker into my home. I know, you must be wondering how it's possible to accidentally do that. But, hear me out. I never was really superstitious, and when I recently moved to this new town I did not expect that to change. Anyway, I'm new to town, so what do I do? I throw a housewarming party. Invite everyone nearby, and the party goes on well enough. I feel like I've gotten to know at least some of my neighbors okay-ish, or at least, as okay as you can in a few hours. And eventually the party winds up and everyone leaves. I look back at the house and the mess left which I will of course put off for tomorrow morning. I was about to wind up and go to bed when my front door camera picked up someone near it. I opened my phone, wondering if someone had left something behind in the house. I opened the footage on my phone and saw, no one. Looked out the window, nope, no one there. I would have thought it could have been some kids playing a prank but it was 2 in the morning and I was going to just shrug it off when it alerted me again. I opened the footage and this time I was very confused. I had no idea what it was that I was looking at. It looked like a dog but far too big to be one. I only got more confused as it someone stood up on its hind legs. And there was something, off for lack of a better term about it. The eyes weren't moving or blinking. It looked like a costume of some sorts. At first I thought it was a furry and not some eldritch creature, not sure encountering which one would have been worse to be honest, and opened my window and screamed at whoever it was to leave. Needless to say this didn't work as I heard weird noises in response. Before I could think of anything else, there was a loud crash and I realized someone had torn the front door down. I immediately regretted that I was on the first floor, there was nowhere to hide. I couldn't run anywhere and so I broke a window and then hid in a close that was out of the way. My hope was that the intruder would think that I had jumped out the window and ran and get out rather than check the closet. Unless they were a thief, but I had a gut feeling this was no robbery. They were here, for me. Through the crack at the bottom of the closet, I could see a shadow move across the opposing hallway. I could hear it now, it sounded like a weird mix of human and animal. I then heard a thump and assumed it had jumped out the window, but I was so scared I didn't even move or dare make a sound until the sun came well up at around 8 am. As you can imagine, the fact that my front door was busted down drew a lot of attention. I called the cops and though they might have been a bit skeptical at first, the signs of damage to my property were impossible to ignore not to mention the footage from my camera. Later that day, Dan, someone I had just met, came over. He asked a few questions, then shifted his eyes around. I know you might not believe me, but I think you encountered a skinwalker. Dan told me how he had seen one around these parts as a boy, but had been sensible enough to run back inside his house until the beast went away. As per him, those things cowtle only get inside if you invited them in. But I never invited this one in. I protested. I was pretty cranky about the whole thing given the lack of sleep, and to that, he simply pointed at my front door. The banner that said everyone's welcome, 
that I had hung out before last night's party. Everyone. I had just handed that thing a blanket invitation. I took it down immediately. Even now, I sometimes wake up at night wondering how it would have been if my trick with the window hadn't worked. Thank God it did though, but I learned my lesson. Never again would I issued out a blanket invitation like that. Fourth story. This story was shared. By you slash xtenkxkskaminex. I think my dog is a skinwalker. I've been seeing a lot of skinwalker stories on this app lately, that goes along with videos on my TikTok. I did not really understand what a skinwalker was even, until I looked it up. When I did I got chills down my back. That topic will always be the one thing that creeps me out the most till this day. And what is the worst part is I think I'm living with one right now. For the people that don't know what a skinwalker is, here is the definition. In Navajo culture, a skinwalker is a type of harmful witch who has the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as an animal. The term is never used for healers. Now these does see, like something from an urban legend or a creepy pasta, and it is so likely that it is but I believe it's real from the evidence that I'm about to tell you in a sec. Now if you look up Skinwalker it's going to show you a creature with a moose looking head and a human body. Now that is just the creepy pasta version that does not creep me out what does creep me out is like the dogs, deers and animals that are skinwalkers. I hope you can find some pics of those cause they are scary af. Now to the point. I got my German Shepherd, Mina a while back. She was a stray dog who was badly hurt so my parents brought her in. I fell in love right away she's the best dog ever, but there are some things you should know about her. Mina is like really smart, like NGL. She once opened my door which I know a lot of dogs can do that but listen to this. We have an older dog Misty and if we have to give her medicine from like the vet we just wrap it in cheese and she doesn't even notice the pill is in there. Now Mina instantly knows she will not eat that pill, one time we crushed it up in her food until it was almost unseeable. Still she would not eat it. Now this is not full proof cause German shepherds have a really good sense of smell but listen to this, this is where the story gets scary. I was sitting on my couch watching horror movies falling asleep. I could barely keep my eyes open, I was almost asleep when I heard a door open and shut. My eyes slightly opened to see a figure walking stumbly and slowly towards me. I thought it was just my mom or I was imagining things cause I was almost asleep. Now this part of the story does not even seem real I still wonder to this day if it was real. As the figure got closer instantly recognized it, it was Mina. I swear to God Mina was on her back legs walking towards me. My heart started to race I told myself I was just dreaming. Now Mina did not do anything but stare at me. Then her eyes started to grow a bright red as her form changed from dog to just a shadow then back to Mina, then she walked away. The next morning I woke up and told my mom about everything, OFC she did not believe me and you probably do not either. Even though I doesn't seem real I swear it was. Now if you ever talk about skinwalkers to me I will leave the room. Sometimes out of nowhere the images of Mina's glowing red eye come back to me, and I've never let Mina in my room or around me since. Fifth story. This story was shared. By you slash Miss Monstrosity. Did I see a skinwalker? First of all I'd like to apologize for any grammatical errors. I also don't spend much time on Reddit so I have no clue if this is the right subreddit to post this in, but I know you guys know your shit so I assume it's the best place to ask. Secondly, I only just recently learned what a skinwalker is, and I still don't know much about them which is why I'd like other people's opinions. This happened in September of last year, we live on a huge horse farm in southern KY. 
My mother, the horse fanatic in the family, travels all over the country taking out horses to shows and competitions. During that time I usually get stuck at home with the responsibility of feeding the animals and other non-show horses. My parents were at a weekend long show, it was around 5.30 pm and I was on my way down to the barn to give the horses their evening meal. Our horses are arranged into multiple sections, pregnant mares in one, show horses in another ECT. Hey race a screen cap from Google Earth of it to kinda give you guys an idea, imager. I was almost done feeding and only had the southwest corner section to go, when I looked into the field that lined that section, that we let the horses graze in in the spring, and saw something that I really can't explain with words. It was far enough away that I couldn't make out facial features but I could tell it wasn't human. It was standing upright one two legs that seemed to be on backwards, instead of the knees going forward, they went the opposite way. The closest thing I can describe it to would be like a very thin, hairless, less horse standing up. I did N0T notice any arms, but with how far away it is I'm assuming they could have just been so close to the body that I didn't see them. I kind of doodled this to give you guys an idea of what it looked like imager. It scared the hell out of me, but I do not think it saw me, it looked like it was watching my house, which was about 100 yards to the northwest of there. I kind of just stood there, I didn't really know what to do so I just kind of slowly started backing up until I was back in the barn. There is a small part in the barn where there are a couple missing boards that you can easily see out of, so I stood there watching it for a while. I didn't want to try to go back home because I was worried it would see me so I just waited. I waited for what felt like forever, before this thing kind of turned around and walked away into the woods. The way it walked was the scariest thing about it, it was so, unnatural. I waited a little bit, then ran back to the house as quickly as I could. The next morning my parents got home, so I didn't have to feed the horses again after that. I've never told anyone about this either, but after discovering skinwalkers I'm wondering what you guys think. If not a skinwalker what else could it be? Sixth Story This story was shared by you slash Alicia underscore moons. You all need to chill about skinwalkers. I've been lurking around this subreddit for a while now, reading some of the biggest hits and the like. This is the first time I've actually made an account. First of all, let me thank each and every one of you for making me feel less alone. I've seen and done some crazy things in my life, and I'm not proud of some of them. Reading all of your stories makes me feel more normal. Now that's over, you all need to chill about the skinwalkers. I mean the second you see someone talk about their experiences in a forest, you all run around screaming, skinwalker, like it's the end of the whole world and they're definitely going to die. And you do that regardless of where they are geographically, what time of year it is, or even the types of events they're experiencing. Honestly, it's enough to make me want to bang my head against the wall sometimes. First of all, they aren't even skinwalkers. Skinwalkers probably don't even exist anymore, since the Navajo culture has dwindled significantly and, to my knowledge, there have been no Navajo shamans who have rejected their faith in recent years. It's possible there's one or two still around, but they're going to be low in number and in northeast Arizona and parts of New Mexico. They're desert dwellers and aren't even found in forests. The creatures that you're calling skinwalkers have never been given a proper name, but I've called them voice takers since I first encountered one when I was 12 or so. Back then, I lived with my parents in the forests of Northern California way off the beaten track. I mean it was like an hour drive to the nearest town. It was that isolated. Our family had lived there for almost 40 years, so the creatures in the forest more or less left us alone until I got old enough to wander into the woods by myself. They were always curious about me, and more than once I had one knocking on my window in the early hours of the morning, 
but I don't count those as encounters because I was never in any real danger. The first time one properly got to me, I was 12 years old and out in the forest alone for the first time. It was my first year going to school instead of being homeschooled by my mother and I, like most 12-year-olds, hated school. So I went into the forest to blow off some steam. It was getting dark already, and was approaching sunset, which is important because voice takers, like most of the creatures in the forest, are nocturnal. I was walking along one of the trails, not paying attention to where I was going, when I heard someone call my name. They sounded just like my mother. So I called back, Mom. And, of course, it called to me again. Let me just say that this voice taker was smart. In fact, it was the smartest voice taker that I've ever come across. Most of the time, they aren't much more intelligent than your average dog, which is why they usually imitate animals. That's just as effective as using a human voice, you would not believe the number of campers who will follow the sound of a dog barking in the forest for miles. Anyway, it was calling me from the direction of my house. So, of course, I turn around and start heading back towards the house and towards the voice taker. It's still calling me, and I'm yelling back every couple minutes. And then it says, Alicia. I can hear you. Come over here. It sounded like my mother was terrified. I never saw my mother afraid before or after this incident, but I knew that she was then. This voice taker does fear and anxiety really well, by the way. Before I moved away from that house, I could pick it out of a crowd because it always sounds hurt. So I start panicking a little, not knowing why she was upset. I could tell that my mom was off the path, so I stepped off of it and kept following the sound of her voice, all the while telling her I was coming and to just wait for me. I get to where her voice is coming from, and it's coming from right behind this big tree. I walked around it, and the voice taker was there. One of the things you guys always get right is that voice takers don't want to be seen. They prefer to stay hidden until the very last second, and there is a damn good reason for that. They are ugly and awkward and won't pass for anything besides a voice taker when you lay eyes on them. This one was standing upright with its back against the tree, with its huge circular mouth hanging open, humpbacked with its shoulders at an awkward angle. One of its legs had been broken at some point and it was standing awkwardly. It was scary as hell to hear my mother's voice echoing out of that gaping circular hole it called a mouth. There you are, Alicia, it said. I tried to run away, obviously, but it grabbed me. It wasn't much larger than I was, and it was skeletal and weak looking, but being grabbed by it felt like I was being held by an adult three times my size. It threw me to the ground and climbed on top of me. That mouth expanded vertically, and then the rest of its body did too, like it had a zipper from the top of its head all the way down to its belly button. Flesh peeled backwards and opened up, exposing the inside of its body. The bones went too, the ribs and skull flexing like they were made of rubber. It was hollow inside except for these pale sacks of flesh that hung pulsating from the inside of its rib cage and what looked like tonsils in its throat. I was trying to scream, but by then the weight of its body had pressed all the air out of my lungs. My heart was pounding so hard it felt like it would burst out of my chest, and I couldn't move my arms or legs. Those pale organs inside of its rib cage started to grow and reach toward my face, and my adrenaline spiked so hard I felt my consciousness try to leave my body. It gave me a needed boost of clarity and awareness of my body. I managed to get my legs up against the voice taker and started kicking the inside of its torso, contorting my body to keep my face as far away from its organs as possible. After a couple seconds of that, it shifted to hold down my legs and I got my arm loose. To this day, I don't know why I thought it was a good idea, but I reached out and punched it in the tonsil. 
It screamed so loud and in so many different voices all at once that my senses almost couldn't handle it. It was like being blasted full volume with every action movie fight scene all at once. My ears started ringing and I actually thought I had died for a moment. Then I realized I was still alive and I punched again, hitting the other voice sack this time. The same thing happened again, and the voice taker was finally stunned enough to loosen its hold on me a little bit. I kicked it off of me and got to my feet. I seized the nearest large stick and hit the thing in the head twice. Then its zipper started to close up again. Instead of leaving well enough alone, I grabbed whatever I could from the ground and stuffed it inside. Rocks, leaves, beetles, flowers, pine needles, it all went into that voice taker. I wasn't able to get much in there, but what I did manage was enough to make it retch and spill open again, its body literally turning inside out. While it was lying there writhing and flapping like a demonic manta ray, I stood up, still holding the stick I had used to beat it. Which is when I noticed there were three more watching me from the tree line. At this point, it was almost fully dark, but I could make them out because my entire body was aware of their shape now, like how you instantly recognize a snake when you see one. I was dead terrified, but I was angry too at that point, and I knew they wouldn't just let me leave. So I screamed it loudly as I could, what the fuck do you want? I'll beat you all too. But none of them approached me, and after a few seconds, I backed away from all four of them. When none followed, I took my new stick and ran all the way back to the house. I was bleeding from the ears and temporarily deaf for about 10 minutes afterward, and sometimes I still hear ringing in my ears because of it. The voice takers never tried to lure me away ever again. I would tell you that I don't know why they all didn't pile onto me that night and kill me, but that would be a lie. I won't tell you why right now though. If people ask, I might explain later, but for now, let's just say that there's a whole lot more than voice takers in most forests, and they're like coyotes or foxes in terms of the food chain, mostly feeding off scraps and remains other creatures leave behind. I learned later that their diet mostly consists of leaves and grass, that they only go after humans and other large animals during their breeding season, which begins in late summer and extends to midfall. The other thing that I learned later is why punching that voice taker in the tonsil, they collect sounds in the sacks in their throat. I don't know how, but they literally capture voices and release them back out. The voice taker that attacked me must have been hanging around the house for months or years catching fragments of my mother's voice in order to catch me off guard. When I punched those sacks, I released all of the sounds that the voice taker had stored up. It was the equivalent of punching someone's breath out of them, but like I had actually managed to collapse its lungs. Now, obviously, I don't recommend dealing with voice takers this way, since you'll probably just be eaten by others even if you incapacitate one in this way. Instead, if you think you're being attacked by voice takers, set up speakers facing outwards from your house or campsite and play something with a whole bunch of voices in it. Sitcoms and comedy shows with ensemble casts are best, especially if they have a laugh track. The voice taker will be so preoccupied with collecting new voices and sounds that it will probably stop trying to attack you for that night, and then instead of hearing the voices of your friends or animals calling you from the woods, you get to hear snippets of dialogue from the office for a week or so. It's good fun, and a lot less difficult to explain away. Plus, you'll give the other creatures in the woods a laugh with it, which is always a good first impression. If voice takers are your biggest problem, you've gotten off easy. I should mention that some of the other creatures that stories here have lumped in under the title, Skinwalker, are different from the voice takers, and are a whole lot more difficult to deal with. But I don't want to make this any longer than it already is, and I'm not convinced you'll take my advice even if I gave it. Thank you all for reading, and I hope you appreciate my advice and story.
It's really helped me to type this out and get it off my chest. I never told anyone about what happened with the voice takers, not even my parents. Neither of them believed in their existence, and I never got the chance to prove it to them. Seventh story. This story was shared by you slash Dark Raven. Skinwalker in the Woods. I live right next to a Navajo reservation and have made friends with many of the people there my age. We like to hang out, play video games and just be normal teens. I walk over a lot since my best friend lives a little less than a mile away from me. This isn't a long trek and usually only takes me about 25 to 30 minutes. I've made this trip dozens of times and have grown very comfortable with it. I know the people along the way so I'm not scared or on edge. There is a patch of forest, however, about midway there. It's a little unnerving sometimes. There is always that feeling of being watched. This was a regular occurrence for me so I tried to just ignore it and shake it off as my mind playing tricks on me. This day I spent more time at my friend's house than I meant to and when I left it was already getting dark. I reached the stretch of forest right as the sun disappeared from the sky. I shivered a little as I readied myself to begin the journey through. I was ten steps in when I heard a branch snap. You know the sound, the one that screams there is definitely someone or something there with you. I froze, not sure of what I should do next. Should I run? Should I turn around and book it back to my friend's house? I didn't know the best option in this situation. I whispered, hello, hearing my voice crack as the words fell from my lips. I don't know why I even opened my mouth, but it was out there so I listened for any reply. My heart sank when the answer came back in the sound of my voice, hello. I started to breathe too fast, my heart pounded against my chest. I felt like I might faint. Hello. My voice came again, but not from my mouth. I wanted to run, but my feet felt cemented to the ground. I couldn't scream, I couldn't reply, as my voice echoed over and over from a short distance away. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was coming from, it sounded like it was everywhere around me. Hello. 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 It repeated. Stop it. I finally managed to tear from my lips. Everything went silent. For a long minute, nothing happened. The air grew stale, and I realized for the first time that there were no typical forest sounds. There were no bugs, no frogs or crickets, nothing. I stood there, terrified, waiting to see what would happen next. Stop it. It mimicked back. I'd had enough and was willing my heavy legs to move. Before I could take a step, I heard rustling in the bushes twenty feet to my left. I watched in horror as a deer head with huge antlers protruded through the brush. As it came further out and stood up on twos, I took off. I flew out of those woods and all the way home in record time. I said nothing to my mom when I got there. I just went up to my room, laid down and thought about what happened. My mother came in at some point and asked me if everything was all right. I replied that yes, I was just tired. I don't know why I didn't tell her. I guess I might have been afraid of how she would react. I called my friend and told him everything. He freaked out and told me that no matter what happened that night, to not reply or look out my window. This terrified me even more. He said to call him the next morning and he would explain more, and that he had to speak to his grandfather as soon as possible. That night I didn't sleep, at all. I stayed awake listening to every little sound the night brought. Around 3 a.m., just as I was about to drift off, the air changed, the night sounds quieted. I felt my heart begin to pound. I lay there and waited, pulling the covers up over my head like a child, far too scared to move. 
It came after a long moment. Hello. I cried, it was all I could do. Hello. Stop it. It mocked what I had said in the woods again. It was terrifying enough when it copied what I said, but then it did something new, it called my name. Amy. My mother's voice. Amy. Amy, come here. Hello. Stop it. My voice again. For the rest of the night, the creature outside my window called my name in my mother's voice and repeated what I said in the woods over and over. In the morning, when the sun broke through the dark, it finally stopped. I fell into a fitful sleep. I woke around 12 to my friend calling to tell me he had spoken to his grandfather and could explain what happened to me. He said there was a creature they called ye Lushiai, he who goes on all fours, or a skinwalker. He explained that it was an evil witch that used dark magic to transform into an animal with the attributes it required and that it had caught my scent and knew me now. I was also given a warning, that since it knew me it would always follow me, that I would always have to be careful. Last night I heard scratching on my window, then a low hum. The creature began saying my name again, but also adding in things I hadn't said, in my mother's voice. At one point it started calling my name, but drawing it out really far like, A-A-A-M-I-E-I-E. It tried to get me to come outside, or to open the door and let it in my house. This went on all night. At this point, I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what to do. Is it seriously going stalk the shadows around me for the rest of my life? I don't think I can take that. Eighth story. This story was shared by you slash Dark Raven. Skinwalker in the woods. I live right next to a Navajo reservation and have made friends with many of the people there my age. We like to hang out, play video games and just be normal teens. I walk over a lot since my best friend lives a little less than a mile away from me. This isn't a long trek and usually only takes me about 25 to 30 minutes. I've made this trip dozens of times and have grown very comfortable with it. I know the people along the way so I'm not scared or on edge. There is a patch of forest, however, about midway there. It's a little unnerving sometimes. There is always that feeling of being watched. This was a regular occurrence for me so I tried to just ignore it and shake it off as my mind playing tricks on me. This day I spent more time at my friend's house than I meant to and when I left it was already getting dark. I reached the stretch of forest right as the sun disappeared from the sky. I shivered a little as I readied myself to begin the journey through. I was ten steps in when I heard a branch snap. You know the sound, the one that screams there is definitely someone or something there with you. I froze, not sure of what I should do next. Should I run? Should I turn around and book it back to my friend's house? I didn't know the best option in this situation. I whispered, hello, hearing my voice crack as the words fell from my lips. I don't know why I even opened my mouth, but it was out there so I listened for any reply. My heart sank when the answer came back in the sound of my voice, hello. I started to breathe too fast, my heart pounded against my chest. I felt like I might faint. Hello. My voice came again, but not from my mouth. I wanted to run, but my feet felt cemented to the ground. I couldn't scream, I couldn't reply, as my voice echoed over and over from a short distance away. I couldn't pinpoint exactly where it was coming from, it sounded like it was everywhere around me. Hello. 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 It repeated. Stop it. I finally managed to tear from my lips. Everything went silent. For a long minute, nothing happened. The air grew stale, and I realized for the first time that there were no typical forest sounds. 
There were no bugs, no frogs or crickets, nothing. I stood there, terrified, waiting to see what would happen next. Stop it. It mimicked back. I'd had enough and was willing my heavy legs to move. Before I could take a step, I heard rustling in the bushes twenty feet to my left. I watched in horror as a deer head with huge antlers protruded through the brush. As it came further out and stood up on twos, I took off. I flew out of those woods and all the way home in record time. I said nothing to my mom when I got there, I just went up to my room, laid down and thought about what happened. My mother came in at some point and asked me if everything was all right. I replied that yes, I was just tired. I don't know why I didn't tell her. I guess I might have been afraid of how she would react. I called my friend and told him everything. He freaked out and told me that no matter what happened that night, to not reply or look out my window. This terrified me even more. He said to call him the next morning and he would explain more, and that he had to speak to his grandfather as soon as possible. That night I didn't sleep, at all. I stayed awake listening to every little sound the night brought. Around 3 a.m., just as I was about to drift off, the air changed, the night sounds quieted. I felt my heart begin to pound. I lay there and waited, pulling the covers up over my head like a child, far too scared to move. It came after a long moment. Hello. I cried, it was all I could do. Hello. Stop it. It mocked what I had said in the woods again. It was terrifying enough when it copied what I said, but then it did something new, it called my name. Amy. My mother's voice. Amy. Amy, come here. Hello. Stop it. My voice again. For the rest of the night, the creature outside my window called my name in my mother's voice and repeated what I said in the woods over and over. In the morning, when the sun broke through the dark, it finally stopped. I fell into a fitful sleep. I woke around 12 to my friend calling to tell me he had spoken to his grandfather and could explain what happened to me. He said there was a creature they called Ye Nald Lushiai, he who goes on all fours, or a skinwalker. He explained that it was an evil witch that used dark magic to transform into an animal with the attributes it required and that it had caught my scent and knew me now. I was also given a warning, that since it knew me it would always follow me, that I would always have to be careful. Last night I heard scratching on my window, then a low hum. The creature began saying my name again, but also adding in things I hadn't said, in my mother's voice. At one point it started calling my name, but drawing it out really far like, A-A-A-M-I-E-I-E. It tried to get me to come outside, or to open the door and let it in my house. This went on all night. At this point, I feel like I'm going crazy. I don't know what to do. Is it seriously going stalk the shadows around me for the rest of my life? I don't think I can take that. Ninth story. This story was shared by you slash group. I'm a security guard at Skinwalker Ranch. I almost died during my first shift. The dark room was filled with the whirring sounds of hard drives and the pale blue glow of computer monitors. An occasional burst of static from one of the walkie-talkies at the charging station would break the silence between me and the other security guard who was trying unsuccessfully to keep his eyes open. Doesn't anything interesting ever happen around here? I asked Peter, my new supervisor. I mean, I figured most of the rumors were bogus, but isn't anything about this place real? Skinwalkers? Glowing orbs? You gotta have a few stories at least. He had his feet up on the desk in the security office and several dozen monitors showing different camera angles of the property were arranged before us. 
The billionaire who owned the ranch had spared no expense trying to capture the paranormal presences of Skinwalker Ranch on camera, but so far from what I understood, he had been completely unsuccessful. You watched one too many History Channel specials, kid, he said, barely opening his eyes to look at me. I realized he was falling asleep. There's nothing here but a rich guy with too much cash and an army of underpaid acolytes like you and me, busting our asses to document a whole lot of nothing. So what's with the body armor? And the tasers and all the safety equipment? I'm surprised they don't have us packing heat with all this stuff we have strapped to us. We look like SWAT officers which was completely ridiculous considering our job descriptions mostly involved eating boxed lunches and trying not to bore ourselves to death. Dude, shut up and quit asking so many questions. One day the old man will get wise that Edie ain't coming. But until then, just enjoy the gravy train, okay? I grunted an agreement and sat watching the monitors as Peter began to snore. Looking at the time, I saw it was past 3 a.m. Only another four hours until the morning shift arrived. But this was the hardest time of night to stay awake. I needed another cup of coffee or I would soon be asleep like Peter, and at least one of us had to keep an eye out for the boss. There was no way of knowing when the old eccentric billionaire would come wandering over for a look at the video feeds and to make sure his hired goons were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. He'd been known to pop in for surprise visits. Since I needed the job and couldn't afford to lose it, I decided a fresh cup of coffee was in order. I snuck out of the security office and went into the adjoining room where a single-serve coffee machine was plugged in on a counter beside a mini-fridge. Yawning, I stuck a pod in and snapped the mechanism closed, pressing the button for a large coffee. The machine began to chug and click and gurgle, before spitting out some hot, steaming black brew. Taking the cup with me back into the security office, I was unsurprised to find Peter still snoring. I blew on my coffee and sat back down, looking at the monitors with forced open eyes. Something caught my attention on the monitor to my right. The barn door was swinging open, slapping against the adjoining wall in the strong wind. It wasn't open before. Peter, wake up. Why's the barn door open? I had to shake him a few times and ask him the question again, but eventually he blinked his eyes open long enough to peer at the monitor. Bossman's probably out there polishing the ATVs or something. Why do you care? If there was a perimeter breach it would have set off an alarm. Cleaning the four-wheelers at 3 a.m. Why would he do that? Peter opened his eyes up all the way. Yeah, you're right. It could be a test, he likes to do that sometimes, to make sure we're not sleeping on the job. You go out there, newbie. I'll stay here and watch the feeds. He put his helmet over his eyes and I could hear him resume snoring a moment later. If it was the boss out there, I wasn't going to cover for Peter, I thought to myself. This guy was useless. It seemed like he didn't know the first thing about property protection or security procedures. I was worried if something really did happen he'd be useless, or would do more harm than good in a crisis. But luckily we were on a farm out in the middle of nowhere. Besides, nothing bad ever happened at Skinwalker Ranch, despite its reputation. Or so I thought. As I made my way out through the hallways of the farmhouse which had been converted into a makeshift security compound, I found myself feeling nervous. Something about this wasn't right. The idea that the boss was out in the barn at 3 a.m., testing our preparedness, didn't jive with me. But I supposed it was possible. Stepping out into the cool night air, I looked across the driveway at the barn, not more than a hundred yards away. The noise of the untethered door banging against the wood could be heard loudly now, and sounded to my ears like an omen of evil. 
A fat orange moon hung low in the sky, its awful gravity pulling me towards the blood-red building. I found myself standing before the open door, the smell of hay wafting out from inside. Close the door and go back to the security office, I thought suddenly. Whatever you do, don't step foot inside that barn. It's cursed. It's evil. Stay out. A voice started murmuring from the shadows inside, as if in agreement. It sounded like a man, but their tones were hushed and quiet, difficult to understand. Who's in there? I called out, taking my flashlight from my belt and shining it into the barn. No one answered. And the mumbling, chanting voice continued. Peter, come in, I said into the radio. But as soon as the words escaped my lips the walkie-talkie made a painful, high-pitched squeal of feedback, then clicked loudly and was dead. Hello. I said again into the useless device. There was no response, and I had no way of knowing if he'd heard me or not. It's probably just the boss trying to catch us slacking off, I thought to myself, considering what Peter had said earlier. I would simply go inside and turn on the light, then the rich owner would give me a pat on the back for my prompt action in response to the practice scenario. With that thought firmly in mind, I entered the barn, my heart pounding. My body knew what my mind had not yet realized, that I was in terrible danger. When I got inside the barn the huge wooden door slammed shut behind me and I knew I was in trouble. The murmuring, chanting thing in the darkness continued its deliberate cadence as I turned and tried to get out, clawing at the door and trying desperately to pull it open. One of my fingernails broke off and began to bleed, but I didn't notice that until later, as the adrenaline was pumping through my veins. A moment later the door itself disappeared. Its edges dissolved into the surrounding wood and I backed away from it, terrified, looking up at where it had been a moment before. Such a thing was impossible, and yet it had just happened before my eyes. I was trapped. Spinning around, I saw the thing in the shadows, still chanting and now swaying back and forth, its silhouette in the darkness reminded me of a shaman mixed with a wolfman, holding a wand or a scepter of some kind. The head of the scepter rattled and made awful, fleshy sounds like teeth being shook in a sack made of skin. I tried not to listen to the things the creature was saying, as the words felt like worms crawling through my ears and into my grey matter, invading my thoughts. It was like an itch that I couldn't scratch. Like a dozen black flies crawling on my brain where I couldn't get to them with my fingers, taking occasional bites and sampling the local cuisine inside my skull. Get out of my head. I heard myself scream, but the wicked chanting continued. The language was ancient and unknowable. Clutching my skull, that horrible, itching sensation of something worming its way into my mind continued, undeterred by my protests. I looked around and saw other dark forms were in the barn with me. They looked like shadows at first, moving along the ground like dark puddles spreading outwards from a surrounding oil spill. But then the things began to take shape and rise up, shedding their two-dimensional forms and turning into humanoid beings with pitch-black features. The shadow creatures moved slowly and deliberately, their mouths yawning open as they approached me with curious faces. Their features were black holes within their dark forms. They reached out towards me as the chanting thing in the corner raised up its hands like a preacher in a demonic prayer service, its voice rising higher and higher in volume. Red painted walls all around me began to drip and bleed, revealing ancient, druidic symbols which were carved deep into the wood underneath. Suddenly the entire barn felt like a living thing, as if I was inside the belly of some great, horrible beast which was inhaling and exhaling all around me. It was hot in the barn, and humid, despite the chill of the night air outside. The temperature was rising quickly, causing sweat to pour from my brown, 
running into my eyes and making them sting with pain as the shadow creatures started to inspect me more closely. Each one took its turn leaning in close, running its oily hands over me and judging me somehow. They made whispering noises back and forth and a few took sample bites of me with shadowy mouths, leaving oddly non-bleeding wounds in my flesh. I cried out in pain each time and it seemed like they were shushing me as they raised up their extremities to my face with every noise I made. For some reason I found myself obliging. Finally one of them seemed to settle on taking me for themselves, as the chatter between the shadow creatures stopped and it smiled broadly, looking pleased with itself. The creature resembled a black panther about to pounce as it leaned in towards me. It looked as if it was preparing to dive into my mouth to make a home inside my body permanently, when the huge wooden barn door, which had previously vanished, crashed in behind me. Glaring spotlights filled the space and I looked around to see the shadow things were dispersing. The shaman creature in the corner who had been chanting in wicked tones made a circular motion with his wand and a dark hole appeared in the wall, which he proceeded to exit through. It disappeared a second later, closing tightly behind him. Looking around, I saw the barn around me was no longer painted bright red. It was old and run down, dilapidated and out of use. The ceiling was broken and sagging, revealing stars through a gaping hole up above. What the hell are you doing in here, kid? One of the security guards was asking me. You're not supposed to be in here. Nobody's allowed in this building. It's not safe. But. Peter told me to go check it out. He was sleeping. I. I never told you to go in here. I haven't even seen you since you disappeared earlier, said Peter, stepping out from behind the other guard. You're lucky these guys came to check in here after hearing you screaming. This building is off limits. Can't you see it's ready to fall down any second? But, I was with you, just ten minutes ago. You said dash. Don't put words in my mouth, kid. And don't make up stories. I didn't tell you to do anything. I turned around and you were gone. I figured you went home, to be honest. Thought maybe this job wasn't for you. I stuttered unsure what to say or how to respond to this. I was sure Peter had told me to go out to the barn to check it out. Was I remembering it wrong? Was I really that tired? Or had I been spending my shift with an imposter? How was I supposed to know what was true? Looks like we might have a 278, said one of the guards nervously. The skinwalkers are back. Don't talk about them, snapped the supervisor. You know the rules. You talk about them and that's when they show up. Everybody get inside, now. Buddy protocols. You need to go to the bathroom, take your buddy with you. You know the rules, Peter. We've got a code black, by the sounds of it. Everyone drew their weapons and I saw these other guards had guns with odd, futuristic attachments on the barrels, strange translucent white pieces that looked like oversized silencers. I hadn't seen any of these people when I arrived, for the first half of my training shift. It turned out they lived on the property and were paid handsomely to be on call to respond to any events as they occurred. You guys gotta be kidding. Skinwalkers? Really? My supervisor asked as we hustled inside. Peter looked unimpressed by all that was happening and I realized that he didn't believe in anything supernatural. He was a die-hard skeptic of such things. Guys, come on, he said dryly. This is complete paranoia. The kid just had a panic attack or something. You don't really believe in this stuff, do you? Quiet. One of the heavily armored guards snarled at him. You don't know shit about what happens in this place. You've only been here a month. The boss should have known better than to let you train the new guy. 
he could have gotten himself killed. I felt queasy and numb all over when he said that, realizing it was true. If they hadn't arrived when they did, who knew what might have happened. Peter didn't say another word, instead he just made an annoyed sound and followed the rest of us as the formation began moving towards the door to the farmhouse. He stayed back a little ways, as if in protest. Just as we were about to enter the house, I heard him stop from a few yards away, muttering to himself. I paused to look back, stopping where I was in the doorway as the rest of the team went inside. I held the door open for him, hoping he would follow, but instead he began to yell in a loud, agitated voice. You're all a bunch of suckers. You know that? Skinwalkers. Really? This place is just a busted down old ranch in the middle of nowhere. There's no curse. There's no monsters. Watch. He turned around, facing the other direction. Oh skinwalkers. Come and get me. Look, fresh meat for you skinwalkers. What, aren't you hungry? Looking back at us, he smiled, then started laughing mockingly at all of us. See? There's nothing out here. He made a surprised sound and turned suddenly, just as something began to appear from the shadows. It was large and hulking, its form an ink blot against a starless midnight sky. Ggrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
The creatures didn't kill them quickly, though. Those who were left alive died slowly, as the hellish wolves tortured them, making them scream for help in an attempt to draw us back outside to rescue them. After a while I plugged my ears, unable to stand the sounds of their dying screams one moment longer. They didn't stop until the sun came up. And by then the creatures were gone. You'd think there would be some evidence. That one of the surveillance systems would have caught something. But the cameras showed nothing the next day, I saw the tapes myself. They showed nothing but a peaceful farm until about 3.30 a.m., when all of them went dead at the same exact instant. Authorities investigated the incident and I gave a statement about what I'd seen. At least, as accurate of a statement as I could, under the circumstances. The whole thing was written off as a wild animal attack and once the dust settled the whole team was let go, fired for our inaction during the event. Not that I ever wanted to go back there again anyways. I'll never forget what happened that day, and what the guard said about them showing up when you talk about them. Tenth Story This story was shared by you slash Navajo Joe 00. This is my father's story written from his perspective. It follows an experience he had with a skinwalker on the Navajo reservation. When I was about 11 or 12, we lived in a small house made of mud and stone. A lot like our house now. It was two of my brothers and I in the house. Everyone else had gone to the James feast and left us to tend the sheep. We were getting ready for bed when we heard the dogs going crazy outside. Thinking it was nothing more than coyotes howling in the distance, we told them to be quiet. We began to drift off into sleep, and the dogs would not shut up. Somehow, I was able to go to sleep for a few hours. Then I woke up very late in the night. It was very quiet and still in the house, save for my brother's snoring and breathing. I realized I needed to use the outhouse and woke up my brother to take me there. He teased me about being scared, which I certainly was. We went out with our flashlight to the outhouse. The dogs began with their crazed barking out in the sagebrush, going from one place to the next. My brother went first and I waited outside for him. While waiting, I tried to follow the dogs with my flashlight. Suddenly there was a very loud whine from one of the dogs. Then everything went quiet again. It was really too quiet for that time of year. Not even the sheep were making noise. Suddenly I heard a few of the dogs going completely mad by the truck. When I looked over, there was this man. He was unbelievably tall, leaning one arm on the cab roof of the truck. He was looking at the dogs for a little, and then suddenly kicking one of them. They all scattered in different directions. The thing looked up at me and I saw its face. It had a pure white face, like a full moon, two burning red eyes, and a slight smile that was pure black. I could not move or make a sound. It began to walk toward me with long strides, until it finally towered over me. All I began to see was a dark red. Like the color of the blood when you cut the throat of a sheep. I kept getting deeper and deeper into its eyes. I could faintly hear my brother coming out of the outhouse. With this, the thing looked up at him. Reality came rushing back to me. I noticed that my brother was too distracted with his buckle to realize what was going on. I also noticed this thing's long hands hovering just inches from my head. Its skin was black ash, and he smelled like a bloated dead animal in summer. I was still unable to move or speak, the skinwalker began to move toward my brother. Finally noticing this figure, my brother became paralyzed as I was. Closer and closer it drew, reaching an arm out toward my brother's head. Something finally snapped in me, I became unbearably angry. I broke from the trance and lunged at the skinwalker. 
raising my arms like a wild animal and barring my teeth at it. A growl came out that I never knew I could make. I became more and angrier at the thing that was trying to hurt us. It kept that smile at first, but the angrier I got the more the smile faded. Finally, with everything I had, I began to make this primal roar at it. It fell backwards and ran away into the night. Looking back at me, its eyes were dim and dull, its smile now long since gone. The next morning the family returned home from the feast. After relaying the story to my parents, they quickly hired a medicine man. Thanks a lot for watching the video till the end, subscribe to our channel horror in detail. Drop your opinion slash suggestions in the comments section, and like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm.